Welcome back to Snowrunner, guys. Now, have you ever wished that the Ford CLT 9000 was good for more than just driving 100 feet down a paved road and then getting stuck in some muddy grass? I have as well. Now, fortunately, a mod creator, and I will leave a link, of course, in the description box down below to where you guys can check out this mod, has attempted to address this through both a 6x6 variant and an 8x8 variant. So, there are the two variants right here in front of us, and we're going to go ahead and put them both through their paces and really see what they can do. And I really hope that this mod makes this truck into a viable option for use in campaign play because I know that there are going to be people that, you know, that will say that, well, you know, it's a good highway truck and that's what it was supposed to be. And I get that. But at the same time, at the same time, I really love the way it looks and I would love to use it more often. But considering the fact that I like to use a lot of trucks for a lot of different purposes, this one never really got all that much use from me. And so I, and I really wish it did because I love what they did with it. I love the cabin. I love the way it looks inside. I love the detail. And so hopefully this mod addresses a lot of those concerns. Now we're going to start in the six by six version. So let's go and fire it up and see what we can do with it in the garage. And of course, you know, we got to put beans in it. You guys already know. All right, let's go ahead and drop into the garage and head into the customization. Now, this rig, let's see. So you've got the 1900, 2100T, and 2400A. So we'll go with that. And we've got balanced, fine-tune, high range, and off-road. We're going to start with the off-road and go from there. Now we've got stock suspension as well as a raised suspension. Basically just a small lift kit. And once we get to the tires, we should be able to put some slightly more aggressive off-road focused tires on this thing. So you got off-road and then it goes right to chain. No mud tires though, which is kind of weird to me. I, I, I would have would have hoped that they would have had those as an option, but all right. Uh, let's see. The UOD2 is usually one of the best bets in terms of off-road tires. It's pretty much good at everything. However, I do love the way the OHD1s look, but I think in terms of effectiveness, we're going to go with the 47-inch uh, UOD2s. Now, once we've got those on the truck, we're going to go with the advanced medium winch and an engageable diff lock, a spare wheel just to have it, and we will do a tall flat cap snorkel. Also, with the engageable all-wheel drive, which puts a front axle out of a Pacific in the front of this truck, which is very cool. Now, we get to the frame add-ons. We've got our logging add-ons, which is very, very cool to see. We've also got our flatbed, our van body, our metal detector module, our sideboard bed, our LC 3.8 loading crane, saddle high, and saddle low. So, what we're going to do is we're going to turn the 6x6 into a logging setup. So, we're going to go ahead and do the log loader crane, as well as the... What?! What? Okay, well, I guess we're gonna do the log carrier front and that's gonna be it, huh? I guess that's gonna be, uh, I guess that's gonna be how that goes. But that's okay. We'll be able to go ahead and do some other things related to logging with the other truck. So, we'll keep the carrier on this one. And rear bumper wise, we'll probably go ahead and put the Ford mud flaps on it, because why not? And we will do the, hmm, we'll do the external blinkers, which we've already got. And then we're gonna do the flat, uh, the flat sun visor. And rooftop, whoa, oh, that's cool. That's really, really cool. Let's go ahead and throw that on there. And then front bumper wise, we've got a ton of options from just about every truck you could think of. Now, I'm going to try to keep this front bumper sort of low profile, but not so low profile that the truck like can't go anywhere. That actually looks really, really good. Uh, I'm trying to, mm, that actually, I also really, really dig. I know it's not made for this truck, but it kind of works. As weird as that is to say, it kind of works. Ooh, that actually, the fog lighter will actually work really well. Now, let's see. Exhaust side fenders and cabin protector. Ah, we'll go with the exhaust side fenders. And we may as well do the cabin protector too, because we don't have anything that far up on the truck. So, don't worry about it, I guess. And then the muzzle, because it's huge. But the only problem is that goes above all the bodywork and kind of destroys the aerodynamics although i don't think we really need to think about the aerodynamics too much but well, you know what we'll do the flap cap just because we're gonna kind of think about aerodynamics here and we'll go with a slightly more old school style wheel on it and it actually wow that red is like super deep and bright let's see what else we've got whoa whoa look at these Look at these color combos. They're super freaking cool looking. I actually really love these. We're going to go ahead and throw beans on the dash. And accessory wise, let's go ahead and do the golden leaf up there. And no curtains. Not really going to worry about that too much. Let's see what kind of sticker slots we have. Ooh, there we go. We'll do, well, actually, eh, 
We'll do take my winch. We'll do freedom bird. And then we'll do the wolf all the way over there on the right. And that will do it for that build. And now we're going to go ahead and hook up the log carrier trailer behind it. And boy, is that freaking cool looking. It's so classic looking. I love it. Absolutely love it. All right, let's go ahead and throw the log carrier rear on the back. Oh, dude, engaging all-wheel drive on one of these is so satisfying. It's so satisfying. I can't even tell you how freaking satisfying that is. Long logs on the back, boys. All right, now let's see what this thing can do as an actual logging truck. Now, the trailer does sag a little bit, and I wish we could actually make the suspension just a little higher because I think it would counteract that really, really nicely. But at the end of the day, it's not really all that big of a deal. So I, I think, I mean, just the fact that we even have this as a setup right now is blowing my mind. I think it looks so good. And not only does it look so good, but it it looks like something that you could imagine seeing, you know? Like this mod does with the Ford CLT 9000 what I wish you could do with it from the get-go of the game. Like, I, I wish you could do this. I genuinely wish you could do this in the base game, or at least something close to this. And the cool thing about it is that I don't think it necessarily overpowers the truck. Um, and I just wanted to kind of get a close-up look at it there and really appreciate the way the truck looks, especially with the fact that it's got these bigger off-road focused tires now. And yes, I know it was originally meant to be a highway truck, but you know, at the end of the day, it would be really cool to be able to, you know, modify the original version into this in the base game. Now, unfortunately, like I said before, we weren't really ever able to do that. And this mod obviously adds a little bit of extra capability into it, but it also doesn't make it so badly over the top that you have to think, oh, is it going to, you know, is it going to constantly bogged down or is it going to constantly get into situations that it can't handle and you know you just have to be somewhat careful with it and you have to respect the fact that it is very top heavy and so you do have to keep that in mind but again at the end of the day you know it's definitely not anything that i would consider to be a bad truck whatsoever very good truck and i think the fact that we have the all-wheel drive system and the diff lock that will make it so much better at getting through the mud. So much better. As a matter of fact, we're about to do a loaded mud test with it right now. We're going to try it with the all-wheel drive on in high. And then we're going to try it in low plus with the diff locks on. And then we're going to keep reducing the gear ratio little by little. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, it definitely isn't OP if it's getting really sort of stuck already down in here. That's... That's... Wow, actually, I thought it was going to do a lot better than that. But you know what? That should put all the uh, all the thoughts about it being overpowered to rest. Because this is literally the first mud field. This is where you would take everything, like, right off the bat. And it's already basically stuck. Although, that does keep it within the realm of realism. And I think it keeps it within the realm of that all-wheel drive system is meant to help it out in dire situations. But isn't necessarily something to be leaned on. So now, let's go ahead and grab the 8x8 version. We'll build it up and we'll see if it has any other extras that didn't really become available on the other variant. So let's see. Uh, same engine options. Same gearbox options. We'll we'll go ahead and throw probably the fine tune on this thing. And we're going to do the raised kit. And let's see if we have any other tire options. Currently, it seems like we have just about the same. Yes, we do have just about the same. So this one, I'll throw the OHD ones on it. Did a little bit of a different tire and wheel setup. Advanced medium winch. Engageable locker. And let's see. Spare wheel. That, that, that cuts in really bad. Oh, uh, there's no actual animated axle up there either. That's kind of, uh, that's kind of an oof, but that's okay. Uh, snorkel, we'll do the tall front facing on this one, and engageable all-wheel drive. And frame add-ons, this one's gonna get something a little bit different. This one is gonna get saddle high, so it's gonna tow, or at least be able to tow, some gigantic trailers. And actually, I'm gonna keep the mud flaps off this one. This one doesn't really need to worry about mud flaps. I'm gonna build it just slightly differently, not necessarily, like too crazy this one i won't necessarily put the top piece on the wind deflector and i know there's an actual name for that but i'm just not able to think of it right now and i don't know why but i do want to put the fog lighter bumper on it because i think that looks really really good like i still do and exhaust wise this one is going to get the muzzle exhaust and it's going to stay with the p16 wheels and this one yeah this one's going to get painted red the other one didn't but this one's going to and it's also getting beans on the dash no stickers for this one but we're going to go ahead and go full, like, crazy trailers with this thing. 
And let the clutch out. Come back the other way. All right, when I said crazy trailers, I meant crazy trailers. This thing is getting a monster of a trailer. So let's go into the virtual garage. Yes, this is where it's going to get very interesting. So let's see. Heavy construction, heavy oil tank, oil refinery. That's it right there. That's it. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Will this fit out the gate? If it doesn't fit out the gate, we're going to have to... Oh, it's so close! Oh, actually, it phases through the top. Okay, yeah, so we don't have to worry about it. Never mind. Yeah, don't worry about it. All right, standard testing circuit now. Uh, yeah, okay. Standard testing circuit. Right. Really? You want a winch to the nearest shrub? What the heck is wrong with you, bud? You winch to a solid freaking tree, not a bush. That bush ain't gonna do you any good when you're trying to pull yourself back up off of the edge of a hill with an oil refinery trailer behind you. Literally, literally take that into consideration, please. Okay, oh, do not drive off the road. Had to refresh the afternoon because I didn't want you guys to be, um, didn't want you guys to be having to watch it in the dark. All right, river test, let's go. Throwing it in high range. This is the 8x8 version. This is full throttle, by the way. Ooh, that's leaning a bit. Come on, Beats. Give me the Beats power. Come on. We can do it. Ooh. Well, that was moderately terrifying, but we made it across the river. It did it. I mean, it pulled us through there, and it did it. We're good to go. It was just um, it's a bit of drama to it, but it's all right. Nothing wrong with a little bit of a little bit of a dramatic river crossing from time to time, and oh man, it actually it gets hung up right there on the trailer legs. God, that's awful. It got hung up right on that little rise in the ground of the trailer legs. I wish it didn't have to deal with that. Like I genuinely wish it didn't have to deal with that. Oh man, dude, she's gonna just keep getting hung up on the trailer legs, isn't she? All right, so here's the deal. This one's stuck in the mud, and the other one is stuck on a small rise in the terrain. Now, normally, this is where we would go, well, it's kind of oofed. But, fortunately, this is where we're actually going to go, let's get the glitch, no, no, not the Glitchworks pay start. Let's get the IX quad steer, and, because we know this thing is freaking OP. Like, so OP, it's not even funny. Now, we're going to go ahead and just put the... Yeah, we're going to go ahead and just put the max on it. And there we go. And why is there a trailer behind this thing? Oh, wait, because it's selected in the garage. Why are you selected in the garage? The, you shouldn't be. You should not at all be select. I forgot it fires up instantaneously. Look how stupid fast it is. All right, you ready to get pulled out of the mud? Let's go, bud. God, this thing acts like it's not even there. It's, it acts like there's no truck behind it whatsoever. This truck is the ultimate, like, get out of my way machine. Genuinely. Now, as is, well, it's going to say as is tradition, but I didn't know if that applied. But the more I think about it, it kind of is at this point. As is tradition. We are going to swap the gearbox out for the high range boy. And we've already got, we've already got the top, you know, uh, suspension option and engine option and all that stuff. And we're going to leave the load of lumber behind it when we go off the bridge jump. Because, you know, we need some bridge jumping action, don't we, Beans? I think we do. You know, that visor I put on there kind of, like, it's kind of ruined my visibility just a bit it looks cool from the outside but man from the inside it stinks for visibility good lord that's awful dude that's absolutely freaking awful no suspension damage from that cone thankfully sometimes those cones get like strange and it the game acts like those cones are like not made out of rubber but made out of concrete and then it tears up your suspension I don't know how that works in the game's code, but whoa, 
This high range is fast. Real fast. That's equivalent to like seventh gear. That that freaking rips, bud. That's impressive though. That's real impressive. All right, pulling up to the bridge. We're about to head down the bridge jump and let's go. Throwing it in automatic mode. There's seventh gear. Where's eighth gear? Where's eighth gear? Oh, get it! Oh, dude, nose right into the ground. Literally, like, since it's a cab over, literally, you would have gone, like, right through the freaking windshield. But we still did the bridge jump, and I just wanted to see what would happen. And this one, it didn't really do all that well. But it's okay, because it actually did pretty well otherwise, while also, you know, not being too overpowered. Because I think, you know, it's definitely going to be nice to have the addition of the all-wheel drive, but it's also not going to blaze through every map in its way. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, please do let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys next time.